Welcome to this video in which we will apply three-dimensional rigid body analysis and in particular uh, look for static equilibrium to find forces and moments on a doggy door. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the idea of a doggy door, a doggy door is a pet door. Uh, so here we have a door that's for normally sized humans. In this door for normally sized humans we have a much smaller door that is hinged at the top so that an animal can push its way in or out. But uh, we feel that that's not high tech enough so what I've done is I've added a cable that goes from the lower right corner of the door up to some control box. And the idea is that the cable can, it's on a winch, uh, so it can actually be pulled in which will pull the door up. That's the whole idea of this thing. And so what we'd like to do in our analysis is suppose that the door has been pulled up so that it's um, parallel to the ground. We want to find the reaction forces and uh, couples at the hinge as well as the tension in the cable. Uh, this may be important, for example, in manufacturing to make sure that we choose components that are cheap but are not so cheap that our expected forces and uh, uh, couples will break them. So. Um, that's the goal, is to find the reaction at the hinge and also the tension in the cable. Uh, this picture just shows us what the raised door looks like. I've uh, uh, put a, a coordinate system on here, and the coordinate system has its origin right here, and then has the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. This also shows the geometry. The hinge is half a foot along the z-axis. The door itself is uh, two feet by one foot and um, the location of the winch that's pulling up the cable is out over here. So yeah, out here is the that location. So um, hopefully this makes sense and again our goal is to determine uh, essentially the forces at the hinge as well as the tension in the cable. So uh, the next thing to do then is build ourselves a free body diagram. So here is the door itself and uh, we have one force acting on the door which is the tension in the cable which is this guy right here. We know its direction but we don't know its magnitude so I'll call it magnitude T and again we know its direction. We'll come back to that in a minute in terms of how we represent that. Uh, we assume that the weight of the door, which is 10 pounds, is applied at the centroid of the door. We'll assume the door is uniform. And then we also have um, the reaction forces, components of the reaction forces at the door. So we'll have a FAX. and F A Y and an F A Z. Okay, uh, so the hinge uh, can supply reaction forces in along any axis. The hinge also can um, supply couples along two of the axes. So it can create a couple along the X axis which we'll call MAX. It will also, uh, or it can create a couple along the y-axis, which we'll call MAY, but it can't create a couple along the z-axis because the hinge is designed so that the door can rotate freely around the z-axis. Okay. Um, so if you look at what we have here, we have uh, T, which is unknown, plus uh, the three forces and the two couples at the hinge, which are unknown. So we have six unknowns. Fortunately, when we're doing static analysis in three dimensions, we can solve for up to six unknowns. Uh, we'll end up with um, the sum of forces equal to zero, and when we break that into x, y, and z components, we have three equations and we'll have the sum of moments equal to zero when we break that 
and to x, y, and z components, we'll have three more equations. So we'll have enough equations to solve for six unknowns, which is exactly what we have here, which is excellent. Okay, before we actually start solving, uh, let's do a bit more geometry and represent things in terms of vectors. We'll uh, define the point where the hinge is to be point A, the point where the cable is connected to be point C, and uh, the point on the winch to which the cable is connected to be about point C. Did I call this C? And this actually should be B. I think I said C. And in order to uh, work with these values, uh, we'll also call the point where the weight is applied W. I'm not going to actually draw that in because it should be fairly clear whenever we apply the weight where it's, uh, where it's being applied to. So to get the information we need, I'll define RA, which is the vector from the origin to point A and that would just be 0.5 feet k hat because that's only along the x-axis. We have RB that's from here to here which will be 2 feet along the i-axis. Uh, we have RC that's the point from here or the vector, the relative vector from the origin up to C. And if you look at the geometry of how this is set up, this ends up being 0.5 feet I hat plus 2 feet J hat minus 2 feet K hat. Okay. And finally, uh, Oops, the position vector for where we apply the weight, this is going to be one foot i hat. We go one foot this direction plus 0.5 feet k hat and then half a foot this direction. Okay, so we have the geometry. Um, we basically, I think, have everything we need now to solve for the six unknowns. So let's start doing that. The first thing we need to do is we want to have a direction vector for this cable, a unit vector that is in the same direction as the cable and hence will be in the same direction as the tension that the cable applies to the door. So we'll define that to be RBC, the vector going from this point B up to this point C, and that is going to be RC minus RB, and so this will be, uh, let's see, RC is 0.5 feet I hat plus 2 feet J hat minus 2 feet k hat, so that's our C, R B minus 2 feet I hat, and this then turns out to be, when I work it out, I've got 0.5 feet minus 2 feet, so this is minus 1.5 feet I hat, and everything else is the same. Okay, so that's kind of messy, that's 2 feet k hat, just like this over here. Okay, and now we need to find a unit vector in this direction. So we need lambda hat BC. Again, this is RBC over the magnitude of RBC. And so if you're forced to do these things by hand, um, you would take each component here and square it oops, and add those together and then take the square root of that, that gives you this magnitude or the magnitude of RBC and then you would take that number and divide it into each of these terms and when you do that or you can just go straight to Wolfram Alpha uh, type in, uh, well in fact we'll just do that okay so we go to Wolfram Alpha type in a vector of minus 
1.5 2 and minus 2 Oh dear, Wolf from Alpha is completely or is temporarily unavailable. Oh, that was close. That's a disadvantage of going to Wolf from Alpha for all of your computing needs is it may not be there. Um, okay, so then we find that the normalized vector, the unit vector, is uh, 0.469 uh, i hat uh, 0.62 5 j hat minus 0.65 uh, k hat. And so we'll go write that down. So this will be um, minus 0.469 i hat plus 0.625 j hat minus 0.625 k hat. Okay, so now we have the unit vector that's in the same direction as the cable. And so what this says is that the force in the cable, which I could call F, I don't know, F sub C for force in cable, this is going to be our unknown tension times this unit vector, lambda hat BC. Okay, so now we know the force in the cable. We've got an expression for the force of the cable. It involves our unknown tension T. The next thing we'll do is we'll find moments about the point A. And the reason I will choose the point A is because FAX, FAZ, and F, uh, FAY all go through this point A, so they're not going to contribute to any moments, which will make my computation simpler. But I'm out of time for this video, so uh, we'll do that in the next installment. Stay tuned.